this is not a gear review channel. As much as I love photography, the gear side of thing has kind of... I used to be obsessed with it, but not so much now. Now it's all about usability and what I like. So I'm not going to go through the tech specs and all that stuff, but every gear reviews I do will be about my personal experience with it. It's going to be stuff that I use almost every day throughout work. So I'm shooting about four days a week. It doesn't take long to realize what's good and what's bad about certain pieces of equipment. This is the three liquor thing tripod. Um, it's called, just let me get this out. It's called the Equinox Albert. Um, this is made by a British company called Three Liquor Thing. This is a travel tripod, but on the larger side. There's Albert and there's another one which name I do not remember because I don't do my homework before doing videos. Um, it weighs about 1.3 kilo, I think was the specs. Um, and I have this tied on the bottom of my Peak Design backpack, which I've shown in the previous video, I'll link. It's a great size, it folds up to such a manageable size and it expands to it's taller than me so it's about 185 centimeters and once you put on the camera it's actually like a bit more uh, it's carbon fiber it's got one two three four it's four sections so it's a bit trickier to set up um let's go wide so this is not the sturdiest tripod in the world it's also not the lightest it's a uh, it's a very good compromise though, and it's, oh, I keep knocking, it's very well made. So you've got four different locks, which I guess that makes it five section, doesn't it? Um, yeah, so it's quite, you have no idea how many times I've hit that pendant. This Airbnb, it's great. This is actually an Airbnb. This is not my room, just so you know. Um, mine's usually a lot more pink than this. Might as well do it properly. Because of how many sections there are, um, it takes a little bit longer to set up. I'm used to my other Miller tripod, which only has two locks, and it goes up very tall. But that also weighs a lot more and it's not travel friendly. I bought this purely for this trip. I know that in places like Hong Kong and London I'm gonna be catching public transport a lot and I just have to reduce the weight. Also flying, sometimes I fly this as a carry-on. It's good to do that. I'm gonna get a camera just to show you. So this holds, I use a 5D Mark III with a 2470 a lot of the times and this holds this perfectly like there are small issues which i'll talk about one thing that confuses me is these and these seems to rotate on the opposite side for locking either that or i've been using this wrong the whole time but so i'm 180 without extending the center column this goes up to roughly 170 165 centimeters this is a good height for me because this is eye level and a lot of times I can do this without straining my neck too much and for what I shoot which is interiors of restaurants most of the time and food for food you want to go up higher but for interiors a lot of time you actually want to go a bit lower so this is perfect for that it uses a Acro Swiss type mount which I personally don't like I'm used to the Manfrotto plate, which is the fatter one that goes on the gear head, which you can do each axis individually, and that's great for precision interior work. This has this comes with a ball head. It's a lot more compact, but it's just not as precise. With tripod, it's weight, stability, and price. You can probably pick two out of the three, but you can never have all three. So now let's extend the center column all the way up. It's got three sections on the center column. The first one I use quite often and I do think it's quite secure. Second one, it starts to get a little bit iffy. 
and if you're using the third one, like, this is crazy for what it is, for how tall this goes. This is actually a bit, like, it's really cool what they've done. Um, it wobbles like hell. Once you extend it this high, I don't see this being useful for outdoor in terms of using maximum height. Um, especially if you're doing landscape and you're doing long exposures at night, this will not work outdoor. Um, I do do this for indoor interiors a lot and that's fine because when you're indoor you don't have to worry about wind. As long as you have the camera on the timer and you just let it settle, then it's completely fine. I've shot this on 2-3 seconds, perfectly sharp images. One issue I did have, this is what I was going to talk about earlier, let's bring this down. All these locking, like rotating locks I love, um, this is what I'm used to with most of my recent tripods. The only tripod I had with a, with a little switch are the old school, like one of my, my very first main follow tripod, little tiny piece. Everything else I've owned since then had these, I don't know what they're called, but it's just a lot easier to use. Um, you saw me open it earlier. It's just, you can loosen them all at once, just pull them out, extend it to the maximum length and then just lock it one by one it's actually very good doing it that way than just like do, 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 and then you do that and then you do yeah they're quite smooth to use that's not not as smooth as let's say my miller tripods um, but they are very good and the carbon fiber seems very sturdy because of how skinny this is it's not the strongest tripod if you're going to extend this quite high, these legs become a problem, especially the center column. If you extend it maximum like you saw before, it's it's not stable anymore. It's great as like a almost a monopod situation where you're just using it to stabilize a bit, but not to hold the camera still completely. But again, it's all about compromises with tripod and with many other things. The legs of these tripods are these um, little rubbers. I've read into issue where they start to slip on tiles at restaurants, especially the time I shoot, sometimes they do a bit of cleaning and it's not exactly dry, it loses its grip and then it just starts to spread out like a giraffe trying to walk. But I don't think that's the fault of the tripod, it's just physical limitation. This is an L plate also made by three legged things, as you can see the colour all matches. I have this L plate because the 5D Mark III with a 24-70mm is quite heavy. If you use this, let's say you have a normal plate, so a little square plate on the bottom which comes with the tripod, it's much smaller. Um, it's being used by this camera right now. You'll mount it like so. And this is fine for landscape if you want to do portrait mode on the side this is actually a lot of strain on the tripod right now with the center column on its minimum length it's fine but once you start going up I don't know if it's doing it now but I remember seeing it being quite there's a slight bend to it which is which is not again these are just physical limitation of a travel tripod. You can't expect to have this kind of size, this kind of weight and still be rock solid. So because of the camera being outside of the center column, all the weights are being pulled sideways instead of just straight down through here. The L plate allows you to mount your camera vertically. So now all the weight is evenly distributed through the center it still wobbles, don't get me wrong, but this is an absolute last resort. I do this rarely. Most of the time I would go maybe two sections max for food shots. Sometimes I only get like a high 45 degrees, um, especially restaurants with table that are quite high. I have to get way above it. Then I'll extend it like this. 
but most of the time I don't and it's fine and even if I do with the L plate it it makes it a lot better this ball head is quite strong and it's rated for a decent amount of weight it's qu they're quite generous with that even so this is the most stable way of mounting this and L plate is just something that's very handy um, not a lot of people use them but I find them quite a life saver. To fold it back up, you have to extend the center column. Obviously, bring these legs in. Once you get used to it, it's not that long of a process. But like I said, because of all the sections, and it needs it to be this small. So you fold it up. See these here? They have to match where the leg is. You have to loosen the center column through here, just so that you can rotate it to the right spot and see here the knob also gets in the way so loosen this which allows you to rotate the head and then you just find this spot that fits that's like a very particular way of fitting it see how this 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 and this have to be in between all the legs so the tripod also comes with a carry bag with a shoulder strap, but I do not use a shoulder strap. Um, I use this case and these hooks to secure it under my backpack and it works out great. This is not a cheap tripod. I think on B&H it's probably about maybe 550. Um, I'll double check. Um, but for what it is, it allows you to travel without carrying a massive amount of weight and the kind of work I do I cannot shoot food without a tripod I cannot shoot interior without a tripod no matter how much light there is in the restaurant I will always use a tripod especially for the food shot with interior you can sometimes get away with hand holding but if you want to get perfectly straight verticals see this shot here see how all the vertical lines are quite straight I mean, it's not absolutely perfect. I haven't really spent that much time lining it up. And also the horizontal line should all be straight. This is because the camera is completely level and it's not tilted up, it's not tilted down. So the perspective allows everything to be straight. When you shoot interior, this is very important. Any wonky lines when there's keystones, it just looks a bit amateurish. So with a tripod, it allows you to do some more adjustments. And that's also why the ball head is a bit annoying sometimes because you're moving all the axes at once. Where with the gear head, you can do slow adjustments, but I'm getting a bit off topic. For food shots, I always have a tripod with me because I style my food to the camera. So I'm constantly moving things around. I have to be able to reproduce the same shot over and over. There's also times where I have to Photoshop two shots together without a tripod. There's so much more extra work trying to line up a shot. Um, I'll highly recommend this to people who are looking for a lightweight tripod for hiking, for traveling um, on planes. Um, this is great for carry-on because if your backpack allows external carry or you can put this in your backpack itself, then you can afford having to check in your bag if you're only going for a small trip. Even when I travel with a suitcase, which I do now because I'm staying 3-4 months in the place, I would have this as a carry-on just to take a bit of weight off the suitcase and I can put other stuff in it. There's a lot of feature with this I haven't touched on, such as turning this into a monopod. You can actually remove the whole center column and mount the ball head straight onto the, tr the legs itself. That way you can get a much lower angle. The whole tripod is very modular. I haven't actually taken this apart that much but let's say you take this to the beach um, you notice that there's sand in the joints you can just basically I've never done this so let's let's find out together on each little section here there's a ring if you loosen that it takes it out so loosen it completely there you go you take out the section so there's a little tap it's what stops that from going all the way through. You can just remove that, clean the inside, make sure there's no 
salt water, little lakes on the end. Yeah, and that's actually, you know, you can see it right through. Clean that with um, tap water or something, make sure it's all dry. It's crazy how light carbon fiber is. It's just, it's weird. And then you can do this for every single section. So this whole tripod comes apart, including the center column. And that's kind of amazing how well you can surface this on your own without... Wait, which way does this go? Yeah. Without any tools. I actually don't think... Let me put this back together first. I can't do two things at once. I mean, it's, it's not quick, but you only do this. God knows how often you do this. The only thing that needs tools are at these joints here. For a while, it was quite loose. So every time I picked up a tripod, the legs, well, one of the legs would just close, and that just annoys me. I like my legs to stay, you know, where exactly where I left them. And it requires two different tools. Actually, let me... So if you have this tripod, I highly recommend you to have hex keys on in your camera kit and a Phillip head screwdriver or key to tighten plates. This is also a free like a thing product. I think it's called either the tool or the clip, I can't remember. Like I said, I'm terrible. Um, and it comes with the L plate. So for the Phillip head, not just, I feel like, for the Phillip head, you used to tighten that. Um, because of the, this is quite front heavy. So there's a lot of weight pushing it down. So often, when it goes that way, it loosens up the bolt. Um, every now and then, just use this, tighten it up, and that's great. For these legs, you actually need two of this because if you put this in here, you're rotating the other end as well. So you need one hex key to keep it stable and the other to tighten it. Um, another thing is on the plate here, see that little hex groove there? That basically keeps your plate on top of the tripod. So if that comes loose, you can actually remove this whole thing. I've ran into a situation where I've been shooting and then I just, there's just a slight rattle and I couldn't tell what it was. And I figured that it was because that came loose and you basically just tighten it a bit with the hex key and it's all good to go. One small, small, small downside of being so modular and being able to take it all apart is that things do come loose every now and then. These rings come loose, but they're not a massive deal. They're easy to, you know, you'll realize it right away. And even if they do come loose, the tripod's not gonna fall apart. The only problem is the tripod head I just showed you. Um, if there's a slight wobble, your camera could shake. So it's always good to have either this or a multi-tool that gives you a hex key and a Phillip head. Um, this lifts on my camera backpack, so I never leave home without. It's also a bottle opener, so that's a small bonus. That's everything I could say about this tripod in terms of my own experience. I get a lot of comments about its color. Camera gears are often black. Like, it's rare for at least more professional grade gear to be any other color than black. So it's kind of nice to have a bit of brightness involved. Sometimes you in restaurants, especially in Hong Kong, they love using mirrors. And it's so easy for this to reflect in mirrors or glass and it just, it stands out because it's bright orange. But at the same time, because it stands out, you notice it right away and you can fix it. Yeah. So overall, to summarize, I do love this tripod. Highly recommend it for people who need something lightweight. But being so modular, I could see this tripod lasting a long time. If any one bit falls apart, I can just get a replacement part and fix it myself. And 
it's not an issue. So I've used this since about early March, like almost every single day. And it's it's performed well, it's never had an issue. Once you work out the little kinks, like having the L plate, um, tightening up other things, and you get used to the knobs, it's a great tripod and it's just so light, it weighs It's a little bit heavier than the camera, like very small margin. I think this is probably, my camera's probably about a kilo and this is 1.3. So yeah, three-legged thing tripod.